In this video, we'll be studying one of the periodic trends. Specifically, we'll be studying atomic radius. Now remember, the two things we're going to use to explain the atomic radius will be effective nuclear charge and shielding. Now you can probably guess what the atomic radius is. The radius, of course, is just the distance measured from the nucleus to the outer or valence electrons. You don't need to know this number, but it's about 100 picometers. Okay, as we go down a group, what do we think might happen to the radius? Well, each time we go down a group, remember, we're adding another shield. So every time we go down a group, we add another shield. More shields means that this nuclear charge that's experienced by a valence electron gets reduced or shielded. So the atomic radius should increase going down a group because when you add more shields, this electron out here is not pulled in as tightly by the positive nuclear charge. Again, the pull experienced by the electron out here is weaker because of all the inner energy levels. And every time you go down, you add another energy level or shield. As we go left to right across a period, what do you think might happen to the atomic radius? Well, you know that as we go left to right across a period, that the number of shields stays the same. For example, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, they all only have two energy levels. What is changing is the number of protons. We go from three to four to five to six to seven. So we're increasing the nuclear charge. If you add more positive nuclear charge, just as you would expect, that's going to pull the electrons in tighter. More positives here pulls any valence electrons in tighter. So we would expect the atomic radius to decrease as we go left to right across the period. Now some students think, well, because we're adding more protons, the atom must be getting bigger. That's not the case, because adding protons uh, they're very small and they take up an infinitely small amount of space in the nucleus. You recall that what takes up the most amount of space are the electrons. So even though we're adding more protons, we're not adding much more volume, we're really just adding more charge. So we add more positive charge here and that pulls electrons in tighter. Okay, let's look at an example problem. Which element has a larger radius, hydrogen, lithium, or sodium, and why? Well, here's hydrogen, lithium, and sodium. You can see that the nuclear charge does increase. So you would expect that as nuclear charge increases, the atom would become smaller because it would pull the electrons in tighter. However, there's also a greater number of shields as we go down. So as it turns out, sodium has the largest radius. It has a greater number of shields. It has more effective nuclear charge. But remember that shielding is more important than nuclear charge. So between hydrogen, lithium, and sodium, sodium is the largest because there's more shields in between the nucleus and the valence electron and those shields block these outer electrons from the pull of the nucleus. Let's look at another example. Which element has a larger radius? Lithium, beryllium, or boron? Well there's lithium, beryllium, and boron. You'll notice that they have the same number of shields because they're in the same group. Sorry, they're in the same period, so they have the same number of shields. What is different about them is the number of protons, three, four, and five. So nuclear charge is increasing. So lithium has the largest radius 
because as we increase nuclear charge, that's like adding more protons to the middle. That would pull valence electrons in tighter. So same number of shields, less nuclear charge.